So we're going to take a look at the Bunsen burner today, and there's all kinds of Bunsen burners that you may be stuck with or equipped with in your lab, depending upon your perspective. Just make sure that you know what kind of gas you have in your lab before you start, and know what kind of burners you have. You can have propane gas, and you can have methane gas. Those are the two common ones. And they have actually different mercaptans added to them, so they have a different odor, but you may not be able to detect that uh, odor. You may not know which one is which. Um, these burners happen to be for methane, and the Flynn has this a gas jet here, nice gas jet, and they've given me two kinds of burners. This one has a gas uh, opening here, so you can let gas in and out. The air control or air ports are right here. Here's one with it on the side, and the air ports are right here. Uh, when my building first opened, they bought the cheapest burners they could get. Now, I know that wouldn't happen at your school. I wasn't there yet, and they, they, they didn't have a gas control. You had to do it here, which is not always the best method. Um, so let's just light this puppy and see what happens. So we turn it on. Oh, look, a yellow flame. Now your students are going, hey, it's a yellow flame. What do I care? You said eat it, so you start heating it. This has got incomplete combustion. There's carbon atoms in there that are being knocked around, so you get this yellow flame due to the carbon atoms, electrons being kicked around. You can actually show that if you grab one of these uh, white porcelain evaporating dishes. You can see, and we'll see in a moment when I take it out, in theory, there's some dark spot on there. You able to get that, Tim? Okay. And um, this is good. This is the unburnt carbon that's in there. That's what's giving rise to the uh, yellow flame that you see. So you need to let some more air in. No more gas, necessarily. So we're going to let some more air in. Now, by the way, the gas pressure here at Flynn is the highest gas pressure I'd ever seen in my life for a Bunsen burner. So it may blow the socks off of this puppy. All right, we may have to get the lights down to see the pale blue flame. And you want to get, if you want to heat it hot, you want to get a flame within a flame, I like to call. All right, we're getting there, but we're also getting the lights down so I can see it. I'm going to turn this gas down a little bit. Ooh, it's starting to make a sound, which I like. And there it is, a flame within a flame. Is that showing up okay, guys? If I put a white paper, okay, it's showing up. I don't even have to do that. <clears throat> now, if you took this match with a pin and you dropped it in there, but this is way too big, so we're going to use this in a second. You, you dropped it in there before you lit the flame. You could actually have the match sitting right here, and it wouldn't ignite. Now, I can't see this very well. I'm going to try this with a piece of cardboard, and then we're going to try it on a little bigger scale in a moment. I'm going to bring this down, make sure I have a flame within a flame. I think I do, and we'll see if we can do this without putting it out. Now, you know where you get this cardboard? A student's notebook. Take some notebook from a kid. I don't know if I should tell you. Take a notebook from a kid in class. They've got this on the back. Use the back. Look at that. There is the flame. Notice it's not burnt in the middle, because that's where the gas is mixing. It's burnt on the edges and at the bottom, but not in the middle. And the hottest part is right here. And I'll tell you, if you use a kid's notebook, they will keep that all year. Usually they'll go, that's cool. They'll, they'll make some comments at first, but they actually think it's kind of nice. Oh, that sounded good. Now. How do you know what kind of gas you have? Well, the smell is one way. The other way is to take a beaker upside down like this and take your methane gas. Methane gas is more dense than air, or less dense than air. Propane is, whoa, that puppy works. Propane is more dense than air. So I'm going to fill this by air displacement or methane displacement. Since methane is less dense than air, I can fill the beaker up. OK, there we go. Now, if it were propane, the propane would have all leaked out by now. But since this is methane, I can bring this up after a second. 
and we get a little flame because the methane stayed in there. It's less dense. In fact, it's also cool. Now let me go over the equation I have right here. Here's methane. There's probably some methane in there too. With oxygen to give us water, and that's usually a gas. It's water vapor, or, and then carbon dioxide. And you can see on this uh, beaker, can you see that, Tim? Can you see the water on there? The cloudiness? inside the beaker? Excellent. All right. So that's nice. And, and you've showed the kids a little bit about how the burner works, what kind of flames you want, what you don't want, what you do want. Okay, let's do it on a bigger scale and get a student involved. If there's a chance of death for a student, they usually pay attention. That's one of the rules of science. So, uh, science teaching, that is. We have what's called the four-foot burner. This is a glass tube. And it's maybe an inch across, right? 2.54 centimeters. This glass tube has many uses. Um, you can use it in a physical science demonstration by filling it with water, okay, and putting a card at the bottom, and it'll actually support that column of water. The card won't come off. The air pressure in the bottom will support that. You're supporting four feet of water with this. That's pretty amazing. Another one is you can fill it with water again, stop her at the top again. You could put a piece of plastic in here, just about the same diameter, but slightly smaller, obviously. And if you put that in, it'll rise. The water will come out, but it will rise. That will freak the kids out. It's kind of a Bernoulli effect. You can also show this when you show uh, miscible liquids like alcohol and water. Put a stopper in both ends. Fill partway up with alcohol. Partway up with water. Put some blue food coloring in so they can see. Stop or both ends, and as you mix it, the alcohol and the water will mix, and you'll get a little pocket of gas inside there with the vapors and partial vacuum in there. And you could show that volumes aren't necessarily additive. So there's a lot of things you can do with a tube like this. So today we're going to use it as a giant burner. And I have some victims, I mean, I have some people to help me. So if you gentlemen and ladies could come on over. One of the people is going to man, in this case, man the gas jet, right? If people are perishing and burning, shut that off. Or you hear me go, shut that off, please. I probably won't say it in that tone of voice, but I'll be saying shut that off. So there's the gas jet. You're going to hold the tube. Kevin has several jobs. You have a piece of cardboard there, and you need a match and a match. This could be striking. Now, at UIC, um, I use a device like this that I kind of invented with our shop guy. This will raise and lower the burner like I want to do here. And the gas comes in here, and I'm able to do all this stuff just about by myself. All right? I don't need any vic uh, volunteers. But here we want one. We want to get them involved. So we've got this hose here, and there's nothing spectacular. It's called a stopper, piece of plastic tubing. I'm going to put this down here, and if, if I turn the gas on, or if you turn the gas on, go ahead. You want to let it run for a bit until it fills this tube up. Now, you, let's, put the, uh, let's light it first and play with that part first. So they're going to light it. Oh, wait, wait. Don't do this over your heat detector. You can do it, but probably only once before you're looking for a new job. <clears throat> All right. Look at that. That's a sign of too much gas and not enough air. We're getting incomplete combustion. I'm going to lower this now. Kevin, you just stay there. You'll be fine. Lower the gas. That's too much pressure. Lower the gas some more. Good. Lower the lights now so we can see the cone within a cone. You're not going to do it yet. Don't. Just hang on to that match. I'm lowering the stopper. Lower, turn the gas pressure down a little bit more. That's good. Leave it there. So you get the cone within a cone. Can we get the lights down so we can see that? There we go. Now, if you lower it too much, then you get what's called flashback. Those of you from the 60s will remember that. Did you hear that? I know what you're saying. Do it again. Maybe they'll catch on fire. All right, light that puppy. <clears throat> That's good. Not enough air. We let the air in by lowering it in this case. Too much. We lower it too much. We get 
Hold on with two hands. Oh, nice. Did you hear that little sound? Okay, now, Kevin, put that match over the top. Glass may be hot. By the way, this is a Pyrex tube. <laughs> you don't want to use a non-Pyrex. You want the ends to be fire polished. Let's try to get it in the middle. Can we get it in the middle? Now, light it well above the match so that the match doesn't get you. Look at that, the match is inside there. Now, what happens when it flashes back is anybody's bet. I've never done this before like that. Let's try that. Ooh, that was a nice sound. You okay? <laughs> All right, take the match out, Kevin. What am I saying here? And <clears throat> let's try the piece of cardboard. Light it and then put the cardboard in from the side. So light it first. Let's see if we're, let me get the good flame. This is going to be a little harder to do. All right. This is where the device I have at UIC is better because I can adjust it exactly. Okay, put it in from the side. I don't know if this is going to work. That's good. I have no clue what's that. Is it burning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, take it away now before the whole thing burns up. You shut the gas off. Did it work? Yeah, pretty it, much. It, uh, yeah, it did. It was on one side. Let me just show you a good example of what <clears throat> can happen. It can look like this. Okay, but again, I'm using this, and I have much finer control than me with just a stopper down there. And you can get a nice thing here, and you see how the nice hottest part of the flame is here and right by the edges. Okay, so that was a little bit on combustion, the Bunsen burner, the uses and misuses of the Bunsen burner. And again, a safety thing, don't do it over your heat detector or smoke detector. That's a bad thing with something like this. Three people, make it safe. Practice safe science.